What's going on, Badger fans? Welcome to another show. We have a great guest on today. We're going to do signing day superlatives for the basketball class. Who's the best shooter? Who's the highest upside? The safest player? The most likely to potentially go pro? All that and more. Great guest on today's Locked On Badgers. Let's go. You are Locked On Badgers, your daily podcast on the Wisconsin Badgers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is going on, everybody? Welcome to Locked On Badgers, your team every single day. I am your host, Ryan Herrings. Really appreciate you being here. Today's show is brought to you by our good friends over at Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered the season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online, where the game starts. Today's recruiting specific show is also brought to you by LinkedIn. Uh, I want to thank LinkedIn for being the official college recruiting sponsor across all the Locked On networks. These days, every potential new hire can feel like a high stakes wager for your small business. That's why LinkedIn Jobs helps. You find the right people for your team faster and for free. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash lockdown college terms and conditions to apply. And whenever we're lucky enough to get Jason Jordan, Sports Illustrated Recruiting Director, Lockdown College Basketball Recruiting Insider on the show, we absolutely hit that yes button and get him on the show. Jason, I thank you for joining. Oh, man, I was happy to be here. So signing day wrapped up. I didn't get a chance to get you on last week, but I do. I did want to talk about um, wrap it up kind of your overall thoughts on the class and get some signing day superlatives and plus a couple okay. listener questions. Um, you ready to go? Sure. Let's do it. Uh, let's hit it. Um, and again, just to wrap up, catch everybody up. If you don't remember, or if you haven't been fully following along, the Badgers basketball signing class consisted of uh, preferred walk-on Jack Janicki and then scholarship players, Nolan Winter, Gus Yaldon, and John Blackwell Jr. Uh, Jason, let's, let's start with the signing day superlatives for the Badgers class. Out of the four guys coming in with, with the preferred walk-on of Janicki, which of these four is the best shooter? Um, I'd have to say Blackwell. I have to say Blackwell. I mean, he's a he's a shot maker, right? So he can create very great playmaker off the bounce, but um, you know, catch and shoot guy also. But he he can knock he knocks it down. I would say any efficient clip. So I would definitely of the three, I would say him. I think that's interesting because I I feel like you've been higher on Blackwell than I don't want to want to say the industry consensus or whatever. Yeah. But it seems like people have been super high on Yaldon, super high on Winters upside, and Blackwell yeah. kind of gets forgotten here. Yeah. Uh, is, yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. I was just going to lead into another question. Is he the most overlooked player out of this group? Yeah, I would say so. I mean, you know, nationally, I would say it would be Gus, obviously, because I still don't think he gets his uh, his due. But um, out of this group, for sure, just for the reasons you said, um, a lot of times people are like, oh, they, they tend to. It's like a knee jerk reaction. I think it's even probably subconscious just in the field to just kind of be like, oh, man, he looks good on. Not to say, I mean, all those guys are, you know, have great upside. They're right. Nolan does have great upside. You know, I'm a, you know, I'm a Gus fan. Um, and, you know, but I would say, you know, John is underrated. He's 6'3". He probably isn't 6'3". He's probably closer to like 6'1". So they're like, oh, some, you know, the guard, dime a dozen. But, you know, he's put, you know, he put up numbers. You know, he put up numbers this summer and um, he was very efficient and he's a dog. He's a dog out there, and you know that's big. I'm high on that. So he knocks down shots of the three. Definitely the best shooter, and I definitely would say of the three, he's definitely the most overlooked by far. No, I love it. Badger fans yeah. can be excited to hear that. Um, yeah. Best playmaker, uh, best player at creating offense for others. <laughs> Gus, yeah. definitely Gus, definitely Gus. Um, just, I mean that that was that that's what makes him special, right? I mean his motor, yes, the energy, yes, but you know when people. When people when I start with motor and energy, people are like, oh, okay, all right, Rudy Rudiger. No, Rudy wasn't all that talented. You know what I'm saying? And Gus is definitely not Rudy. Gus is a um, has elite level talent. So um, that is what makes him special: his ability to create, and, um, play, make for himself and others. And that, you know, when we had him on the show, because we we were able to interview Gus, that's one of the things he <laughs> talked about. He said, "Yeah, he yeah. said you can't you can't double me, right? Because I'm no. just going to find the open shooter." That's a fact. Yeah, and. Right. I love it. I love his game. You know that. We're both Gus fans here. Yeah, um, yeah definitely. Highest upside player in this class? I would say, I mean, that's tough because, you know, um, for obvious reasons. But I, I would go with Nolan just because of his size and his um, versatility. Um, I mean, 6'10", 6'11", but, you know, he can almost play like a three, you know, uh, just because of his skill set and his ability to knock down shots and stretch the defense. So um, that – that we go back to that on paper thing, but he, he produces too. I mean, he's just a really good, uh, good piece for sure. And a guy, a system guy who should thrive in a system. And 
when you know it, he went to a place that has a great system. There you go. So yeah. I definitely would say his upside is is probably the highest. Well, he's uh, out of everybody in this class, and correct me if I'm wrong. He's the guy that, if someone were to say modern basketball, just that yeah. kind of overused hyperbole, but that he looks like that guy. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All right, let's go. Uh, safest bet to have a four year, uh, like a successful four year college career. Safest bet. Give. Oh, so we're saying all three of them are going to have four year college careers. Yep, all of them going to stay. Who's the safest oh, player here? Gus. I mean, yeah, I, because, you know, I mean, I put such a high premium on there. So if, if we're being honest, there's no way you can get around the fact that the EYBL, I mean, they have 75 percent of the top SI 99. I mean, come on, get it out of here. Right. So and then you go to Peach Jam, you have to be your team has to people don't forget that part. Your team has to win to go to Peach Jam. So you always have, you also have to be a winner. Right. Um, and so so he goes there and he le- just dominates people. Like, I mean, I think one of his biggest breakout games was against Sean Stewart, uh, Duke commit, who is an ox down there, super versatile, all athleticism, um, strong, jumps out the gym. And he cooked, I mean, I'm, gonna say, I'm not going to say he cooked him, but that's the one that people were like, ooh, well, he did Sean like that? And it was really effortless. Like, it was like, yeah, I mean, that, this is my matchup for today, and I'm he's going to get on my back. I'm going to give him pump fakes, and he's going to jump because he, he, you know, the guest always says, you know, I use people's elite, their elite status. I use that against them because I know that they're going to go for a lot. Those guys are always going to go for the highlight block. And, you know, I can always get them on my hip and I get separation. So um, I would definitely say him. He's going to y'all are going to really like him. I think can't wait. Probably, you know that by now. Yep. Yeah. And listen, that, that gets into my next question. I think we already answered this. We don't have to bet, spend a ton of time on it. Yeah. Most likely fan favorite out of this group. Yeah, Gus. Yeah. yeah. He's got the best nickname. I mean, come on. You know, it's gonna be so you gotta go fun. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, let's go best overall defender out of this group. Um, which I know they're different positions. It makes it difficult yeah. for sure, but yeah, but I, would say, I would say Nolan. I would say Nolan because he can guard so many different positions. He's he's agile. I think that part is underrated. Now we always talk about defensively, um, you know, with uh just on the perimeter showing and getting back, helping and recovering these concepts aren't new to them, but at that level and at that speed, there will be a curve, right? Given that, you know, his length and his ability um, and his agility are going to enable him to to be able to guard multiple. Now he's going to have to get a little bigger, but you know, I am, I'm, you know, I don't think you have to get bigger. I think you just got to get better. So um, I don't, I, th- I think strength is overrated, even in the paint. I mean, I can point to you out some bean poles that are dominating on there just because mm-hmm. of their mentality. So, um, I would say him because of his length and uh, versatility. And then his just willingness to adapt and gel and buy in. So I, I would definitely say him. By the way, you should trademark that. If if you if you came up with that, don't get bigger, get better. Like that's yeah. that's great. I have to I have to look into that. I like that's a really I, I really like that because it's so true too. Like just it's very true. There's yeah. real thin dudes in the NBA that are are just unbelievable. Um yeah. Reggie Miller looks like malnutrition right now, right now. <laughs> right, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, let's get the next one. Um, let's see. We did that. With, all right. Overall class grade. If you, had, if you had to grade this, I know it's early. I know people don't like giving it a grade before anybody's yeah. played, but just based on who they got, um, yeah. did they hit the recruiting ceiling? Yeah, I would, I would give them a B plus just because for their, you know, their ability to identify, um, system guys who, and we talk about this a lot, have are interchangeable, high IQ. There's clearly a theme, interchangeable parts, high IQ guys, guys who can guard and uh, play multiple positions. So, um, and they got who they wanted. Like they went after the ones they wanted and they got them um, by and large. But, you know, the versatility, all that, I would say definitely a B plus. Now, are, are there players that are better than those guys? Yeah. Yeah, of course. Right. But. You get the guys, and like we always, I've talked about this before. Everybody's not going to be DJ Wagner today. Was the big, you know, obviously went to mm-hmm. Kentucky. Now Kentucky, I mean, they have four, four of the top, depending on the rankings. Our SI ninety nine comes out next month, but they'll definitely have like a general consensus four of the top ten to fifteen guys. I mean, that's that's insane. That's that's on some different stuff. Good luck with that. You know what I'm saying? Like I hate, but only one or two people are doing that. Right. So that means a lot of other schools have got to get really good pieces um guys who are going to buy in 
I mean, you have a potential star in Gus. You have a potential star in Nolan over time. And you have a really good guard in John. So um, I definitely would say uh, B plus for sure. For sure. Uh, that's they like they identified it and they went after it. They got it. They located it and executed it. I would give the staff uh, big kudos for that. No, I love it. And coming up next, we're going to talk a little bit more about that staff. What's the national perspective of Wisconsin from somebody who covers it at a national level? Plus, take a couple questions from listeners of the show. That's coming up next with Jason Jordan. Keep him on the show for another segment. Uh, but first, today's show is brought to you by our good friends at Simply Safe. If you've thought about securing your home with home security but have been putting it off, you'll want to listen up. Right now, Locked On Badgers listeners can order the number one, number one rated Simply Safe home security system for 50% off. The biggest offer of the year. You're not going to want to miss it. And here's why I love it. I've talked about it before. I go occasionally on work travel. I take trips. I'm not home all the time, but I got a fam. And having something to protect my house, my family, it means more than anything. And it gives my wife peace of mind. It gives us peace of mind. We have door our sensors on the doors, which are really incredibly simple to install. They chime when somebody comes in or out, which also gives us the ability. We have little kids. And when they go in and out randomly, we can hear somebody going in or out. We know our kid left to go check on them in the backyard. It just gives us peace of mind. It's hard to put a price on that, quite frankly. Um, Simply Safe was named also the named the best home security system of 2022 by U.S. News and World Report. That's the third year in a row they've done that, building a security dynasty. And in an emergency, 24/7 professional monitoring agents use Fast Protect technology exclusively from Simply Safe to capture critical evidence in case something does go wrong. You get a quicker police response, which is what it's all there for. Don't miss your chance to save big on the only security system I recommend. Get 50% off any new Simply Safe system at simplysafe.com slash lockdown college. Don't wait. Simplysafe.com slash lockdown college. There's no safe like Simply Safe. I want to thank everybody for tuning in to Lockdown Badgers. When you're done here, go check out uh, Lockdown Sports today. This fly is buzzing around me. For all the biggest uh, news and, and stories of the day summed up like only Lockdown can do it, go check out Lockdown Sports today. And let's bring uh, Jason Jordan back on, Sports Illustrated Recruiting Director. Uh, locked on college basketball recruiting insider Jason definitely want to give you an opportunity to, where can people find your work and get a little more insight into college basketball recruiting yeah si.com college basketball section we're there all the time especially now um and you know Jason Jason Jordan si on Twitter Jason C Jordan on Instagram so definitely come check me out love it and we'll definitely put that in the show notes as well uh we have a couple questions from listeners of the show and then i want to get your your take on great guard and just what's the national per, uh, perspective of wisconsin okay. um here's the first question i would love to hear jason's opinion on winter ceiling as a potential pro player also do you think that how should winter develop as a freshman he says is it does it make more sense for him to almost redshirt get a little stronger i know you said i'm his question i know you said you don't like that term but yeah. Does he need a developmental year is probably a better way to put it. Mm, no, I don't think so. Um, well, first question, as a pro, uh, you know, eh, I mean, I don't like to I don't like to do that too early. Like, so, I mean, on does he look the part? Sure. Like, we, the, the game is going that way with a 6'11 stretch four who can run like a gazelle and, you know, guard multiple positions. I mean, he checks all those boxes. Um, and the fact that I, I he, he potentially would be a four-year player uh, that's going to be scary by junior year, probably sophomore year, um, depending on how he develops as a freshman. I don't think he needs the red shirt. I think he's he's better than that. Like, I think he could help you guys um, in year one. I do because his skill set, because of his skill set and his ability to um, gel into a system. So if he um, if he's able, you know, if he's able to play in that system and play his role, he would accept that role and he'd do it really well. So at six eleven. Um, with a versatile skill set like that, Garden two, three, four, five. Um, yeah, yeah, no, he's gonna be on the court. You know, I think he'll get on the court for sure. Um, I don't, you know, don't listen. Let me tell you something. Don't listen to these rankings, man. <laughs> you know, and I'm gonna be real. Like, it, You're a rankings, rankings guy. <laughs> yeah, I know. I so this is why you should perk up. Listen to me. Don't listen to them rankings, man. Even that that SI ninety nine is really good. It's really good. And I feel like our do I feel like ours are the most accurate? Yes. Right. Um, because we 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 don't we're not heavy on hey, what could they potentially be at 25 in the NBA? I don't they, most people don't realize their potential in this in this spectrum. If you go back and look at the numbers, it's really low. Um, so I'm all big on what did you do now? What are you doing now? Because that's gonna give me a better indicator of what you're gonna do at the next level. So these guys have all shown improved at the level they are now and with a logical progression i think you know he could really develop into 
a guy who could have a pro career, but um, I wouldn't put the cart before the horse. I, I definitely want to see how he develops in year one. And I think he could be a, a big addition and a guy who could definitely help you guys off the bench. Uh, that's a great answer. And really quick, um, I want to continue talking the recruiting class, but you mentioned help right away, help in year one. I know you and I, I don't know if you've had a chance to see any Badgers basketball, but uh, Connor Segan has, he has look, already looked the part. It's something yeah. we talked about. I, yeah. I would assume there's no real surprise on your end that he's already found a way into the rotation and is hitting buckets. Oh, absolutely not. Absolutely not. Once again, when you let a system guy get into a system, and you, it, I mean, he's going to flourish. He's going to flourish. And, you know, when you kind of let him fly and have some, a little bit of, and then as, you know, as you'll see as the year goes on, he'll get more and more leeway. The rope will get more and more long uh, with Greg Gard. So, um, yeah, not at all shocked. Makes a lot of sense. Um, system guys flourish in the system. It, it ain't hard. We make it hard. It ain't hard. Right. No, I love that. Uh, next question up. We got this one's from Badger Gator. Of the three players, who do you see making the biggest impact as a freshman? He says probably Yaldon, but. Yeah, I think it's, it's definitely Gus. It's definitely Gus. I mean, his footwork alone is it's different. It's different. You know, and I, I did a story on him. And you look at him, you're like, he doesn't look the part. Yeah, until it's five minutes into the game, and you're like, oh, big boy can play. He can move, you know. And so that was always the talk on the sidelines at Peace Jam. Yeah, like he, you thought he was slow, but he's really quick. He's going to win a lot of races in the first two steps. You know, so like if it's a 40 time, it's going to be slower. But if you run in five, like a the first five yards, he probably will be past you. You know, right, because right. his footwork is amazing. That's so awesome. I definitely say Gus, yeah. Yeah, and that, I think that's where Badger Gator thought you'd go as well. Um, yeah. I, want to, I want to then pivot here, kind of wrap up the show with um, Jason. Mm -hmm. What is – I'm very curious on this, and I haven't had a chance to talk, so every time we've been on, we've had a lot of recruiting stuff to talk about, right. prospects to talk about. But from someone who covers basketball recruiting from a national perspective, right. what is the national perspective of Gray Guard and the Wisconsin Badgers recruiting staff? So, you know, I always, I, I always gauge stuff like that um, when I talk to players um, and they talk about their, the, oh, who have you talked to this week or whatever. And, you know, I, I always, I listen to tones when they talk about uh, different staffs and, you know, uh, excitement and stuff like that. And I will say that the Wisconsin phone call, the Wisconsin text, the Wisconsin offer for sure, definitely rings out. You know that that's one that uh, you know, like. Yeah, Wisconsin hit me, or coach said, coach said, um, coach guard is gonna call. Him. You know, I, I hear that. I hear that the height. You know, there's a little bit of elevation in that. So from a national perspective, you know that is, and and I'm and we're talking now. Are we talking top five prospects? I don't. I don't. Y'all don't go after a lot of top five prospects right i don't see that on a lot of you know i don't i think what i like about greg Gard is he knows what it is you know and i think he he goes for players um that he wants specific to what he wants and he goes all in for that you know which is you know it's a strategy a lot of a lot of coaches do the same thing but he's really good at it he identifies and he identifies identifies who he wants and then he goes after that really hard but i'll say um I, even with top tier players, because I've definitely heard it a couple of different times. I would say uh, nationally in the top tier and then certainly in the four star range, that definitely rings out for sure. For sure. I've heard that a lot. Yeah. Is there any carryover? Fans talk about this a lot. And I, I want to wrap up here on this question because I, I honestly don't know. Uh, yeah. Fans talk a lot about you put somebody in the NBA. Johnny Davis is a lottery pick. Now more yeah. people are going to think you can develop them into lottery picks. Is that yeah. true or is that just overblown? Um, no. Uh, yes and no. Right. So you need more than this is the thing. If you're going to hang your hat on that, then you're going to need more than a couple examples. You you need a couple examples. You can't hang. You can't say, well, this one time I had this. And you're not know, really developing. Then you're gonna be like, okay, why don't you develop more? Because then you open yourself up to questions right. that way, right? So, um, but if you're like a guy who's got 10, 10 examples, yeah, then you probably want to lean into that as a selling point. But you know, uh, by and large, I would say no, because the reality is most schools aren't developing lottery picks. Mm -hmm. I'm talking ninety five percent, so you can't really sell that, you know. So the development part, um, yes, because you can look, you can, you can, you can work in stats and different things like that um, to show how this kid, year over year, and you know how he's up this percentage, and I, I hear that a lot. Um, but you saying, hey, I had this NBA draft pick at one point, it's like, eh, 
then you're opening yourself up to criticism. I think you should, most coaches will tell you you got to be careful with that because right. these kids are sharp. These kids are sharp. No, that makes sense. And to your point, a lot of the players that are on that track are, are looking at probably schools yeah. that do have five, six, seven lottery yeah. picks that they can pretty easily yeah, point to. Absolutely. Yeah, that's a good point. All right, everybody. He is Jason Jordan. As always, we are thrilled to have him on the show. Great insight. Wrapping up the Wisconsin Badgers 23 recruiting class. Jason, as always, man, uh, really do appreciate the insight. Absolutely, man. Thanks for having me. Oh, of course. And today's show is brought to you by our good friends over at Bet Online. Bet Online remains the number one source for all of your sports betting needs and information. And again, is the number one place to get live futures betting, um, in-game betting, all, all not live futures betting, sorry, live in-game betting and futures betting. They cover every sport, basketball, baseball, football, hockey, esports, golf. It's all there on Bet Online. And it's one of the best and easiest ways to do this, plus live casino games. Um, and sports podcast. It's a one-stop shop. It's the reason we use it over at the Lockdown Network. It's become our number one source for this. We're always the fastest and easiest way to get your betting fix. Head to the website today. Use your mobile device to learn more about the trends in action. Bet online where the game starts. I want to thank everybody for continuing to tune into Lockdown Badgers, your team, every single day. And I want to wrap up what Jason said. A couple of interesting things that kind of he pointed out that I wasn't expecting him to answer that way. The first was best shooter i thought he was gonna go with yalden or winter if if he if john blackwell is the best shooter in this class and he's also a really good wing defender um God, i have this fly just buzzing around me it's driving me nuts uh but if he's if i i guess i wasn't looking at him at that as that level of shooter which if he is that's that's a big deal because it just continues that thread of gray guard and this badgers coaching staff basically the thread of we need more shooting right we know yalden can shoot we know winter can shoot and now blackwell's that guy you just brought a siege in in robinson in the 24 class as a shooter oh, this team is going to be so full of shooting which after the last couple of seasons thank you yes it's it's going to be so much fun to watch yalden and winter pounding it on the inside with shooting all around them so i thought that was interesting i think his b plus grade was very fair i i would probably go B plus A minus, I think they hit their targets. I think they got who they want. The only thing that I think the Badger staff could have done a little bit better and I would have liked to have seen uh, maybe them bring somebody in in this class is I think we're still lacking kind of a 6-7 athletic wing, right? Some, somebody on the perimeter that can get out in transition and cause damage, right? That can get in passing lanes and create havoc. That can match up uh, one through four athletically on long offensive players. You know, somebody who... It maybe isn't even the most skilled. In fact, somebody that isn't the most skilled but has raw athleticism and length that we kind of have a bit of a dearth of in this Wisconsin program at times. And I think they could have maybe gone that route with Boo Boo Benjamin. Um, there was a couple of other players that maybe potentially could have fit that hyper-athletic long mold. You know, a guy who needs a little bit more refinement but has the athletic physical tools. I think if they had brought someone in like that in this class as more of an upside projection play, then you're talking like just a home run class. But as it is, this is a very, very good class. Badger fans should be incredibly excited about it. I think I agree with him. Uh, Yeldon's going to be a star. Winter has a ton of upside, especially if – and another thing Jason said that's interesting, he, he thinks Winter has the, the highest defensive ability on this group. So if you have a guy – he said guard – I think he said one through four, two through five. I mean, either way, that's a ton of defensive versatility for Winter, who can also shoot the ball. It's going to be a lot of fun, y'all. I'm very excited about this basketball program, the trajectory it's taking. Great guard has been crushing it on the recruiting cycle the last couple um, the last couple of years. And going into next year already, have Robinson locked up. I think it's going to be really good. I'm excited about it. Um, and I think this was a very big step towards what we're going to see in a couple of years, a potential Badger team that is going to be an upper echelon Big Ten basketball program or continue to be an upper Big Ten basketball program. So, Appreciate everybody tuning in. Let me know in the comments what you think. Um, how would you grade the show? Or not the show, geez. How would you grade this recruiting class? Um, what are your superlatives? Who's the best shooter? Who's the most ready? Who's going to be the fan favorite? Best defensive player? Most likely to play in the NBA? Let me know what you think. Uh, we're going to continue talking about Lockdown Badger. We've got a bunch of football content coming up this week. More basketball content. Um, a lot of things happening in the program right now. So stick with us. We're going to talk to you tomorrow. Appreciate everybody being here uh, on Wisconsin. And we'll talk tomorrow.